Lisa White. To the family of Lady Carrie James. family of Lead Lady Dorothy Lyles. Thank you. I had a couple individuals that I wanted to um, I wanted to honor on today. And I want you all to bear with me. And it's just, and I'm going to do this really quickly because I don't want to change the flow of the, of the service. And I hope that this hasn't been uh, kind of changed things already. But I, there was a couple people that over the years, they've always served. And typically they will stand in the background. I know them quite well because they're connected to me. And I couldn't let another year go by and I not recognize or that the women's conference not recognize their value to this church. I'm gonna ask St. Jean Mapson Sweat, will you come forward? You are a diamond in the rust. If you need anything done, she'll get it done. Give her another hand, please. I'm trying to do this quickly. Sister Mary, elect Lady Mary Brown. This is my big sister, my sister mama. <laughs> However you want to address that. She has always been our inspiration. I love you, sis. You're my dad. You see her back in the kitchen. She can burn, let me tell you. And she's cooking. She's serving. However that she can be an assistance to the congregation. I thank God for them. God bless you. It's in the hands. Sister Angel. Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can we just lift our hands and just say something to the Lord? He's been so good to us. Hallelujah. As we prepare our minds to receive the word of God. Hallelujah. Glory to your name, God.
We thank you, God, for bringing us to this appointed time, for this appointed season, for this appointed moment, God. Lord, I ask you to move me all the way out of the way, God. Yes. That you would get the glory. Yes, In the God. name of Jesus, Lord. Lord, bless your word, God, to go forth. God, in the name of Jesus, encourage these, these your people. In the name of Jesus, we give you the glory, we give you the honor, we give you the praise, for it all belongs to you. In Jesus' name, we say amen. Amen. You may be seated, those that were standing. Amen. We do honor God. I honor God, for he is an amazing God. He is a great God. He does great things. Where are we? Our blood. Amen. So we honor him today. Amen. We give honor to our chief apostle, Clark. Amen. And his lovely wife, our first lady, Clark. We give honor to the assistant chief, our apostle Daly, and his lovely wife, our lady Daly. We give honor to the apostles in, in the college of bishops. Amen. Amen. And for a moment, I didn't see the uh, uh, apostle and the assistant to the, uh, uh, the chief. And I was like, all right, praise Jesus. And then I saw him come and I said, well, bless him anyway. Amen. I give honor to, um, to the president of this great women's conference, our first lady, Julia Johnson. Amen. Which afforded me, she called me and, and, and you know gave me this opportunity that I don't take lightly at all. Amen. So I just, just pray for me. I give honor to um, the memory of my dad, Apostle Lawrence Smith, and my mom, First Lady Alice Bailey Smith. Amen. I give honor to their memory and their memory. I thank God for he's great. And um, one of the beautiful women that came up to give the fire. She was saying how the Lord was stretching her, and he's stretching me too. Amen. I, I will pray for your, your husband um, getting dialysis. I praise God. And we'll pray. Amen. But the Lord is stretching me in a, in a similar but different way. Uh, my husband, I give honor to him. Uh, my husband, our elder Floyd Tyree Allen Jr. My husband of 18 years. Uh, and... He stayed home with my beautiful children. I'm the kind of mom, I only pull my children out of school for feast days and sick days. Bless the Lord. Ah, glory to his name. And so this wasn't one of them. Hallelujah. And so we kind of went back and forth because I, I, when I say I was similar to the beautiful the lady in the beautiful pink dress, where I don't travel without my husband. I don't go too many places without my husband. When you see me, you'll see my husband. Praise the Lord. And I learned that from my mom and dad, but I also learned that from my first lady, Toya, my sister-in-law. She said, me and Michael, we don't need space. We are a unit. I said, come on, first lady. I know you over there somewhere. I said, we are a unit. Amen. But when God is stretching you and you say a real yes to God, he will challenge you to that yes. And I said, Lord, I'm going to really do this <laughs> without my husband. But I said, God, I thank you because the Lord is with me. And not only is the Lord with me, I didn't come alone. Amen. I came with some mighty women of God from a bunch of harvest house of prayer. Amen. Come on, harvest to stand up. Come on, harvest to yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I came with Evangelist Sharon. Amen. Prophetess Johnson. Our Mother Minty. Our Mother Sylvia. Our Minister Honey. Our Minister Lori. Our Sister Brittany. Our Sister Takira. And our Sister Tadasia. Amen. So the harvest is here. They, they said, Pastor, you don't have to go alone. I said, thank you. Amen. We're going to get into the word of God. I don't, I don't like to say I'm going to be out your way. The word of God is never in the way. We in the way, but the word is never in the way. Amen. So we're going to bring forth the word of God and sit there. Hallelujah. Turn to Judges, the seventh chapter. And we're going to read some, not all, but we are going to read some. This is a, still the Sabbath. The sun is still up. Praise the Lord. Amen. And we're not going to rush his word on his day. Amen. 
Amen. All right. I hope you have Judges, the seventh chapter. I'll begin to read. I may skip around a little bit. It says, Then Jerubel, who is Gideon, and all the people that were with him, rose up early and pitched beside the well of Harath, that so that the host of the Midianites were on the north side of them, by the hill of Moray in the valley. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people that are with thee are too many for me to give the Midianites into their hands. Lest Israel vaunt themselves against me, saying, Mine own hand hath saved me. Now therefore, go to proclaim in the ears of the people, saying, Whosoever is fearful and afraid, let him return and depart early from Mount Gilead. And their return of the people 20 and 2,000, and there remain 10,000. And the Lord said unto Gideon, the people are yet too many. Bring them, them down unto the water, and I will try them for thee there. And it shall be that of whom I say unto thee, this shall go with thee, the same shall go with thee. And of whomsoever I say unto thee, this shall not go with thee, the same shall not go. Let's look at verse 7. And the Lord said unto Gideon, By the 300 men that left will I save you, and deliver the Midianites into thine hand, and let all the other people go every man unto his place. So the people took victuals in their hand and their trumpets, and sent all the rest of Israel every man unto his tent and retained those 300 men and the host of Midian was beneath him in the valley. Verse 15. And it was so when Gideon heard the telling of the dream and the interpretation thereof that he worshiped and returned unto the host of Israel and said, Arise, for the Lord hath delivered into your hand the host of Midian. And he divided the 300 men into three companies and put a trumpet in every man's hand with empty pitchers and lamps with pitch, within the pitchers. And he said unto them, look on me and do likewise. And behold, when I come to the outside of the camp, it shall be that as I do, so shall ye do. When I blow with the trumpet, I and all that are with me then blow ye the trumpets also on every side of all the camp, and say, The sword of the Lord and of Gideon. So Gideon and the hundred men that were with him came unto the outside of the camp in the beginning of the middle watch, and they had but newly set the watch, and they blew the trumpets and break the pitchers that were in their hands. And the three companies blew the trumpets and break the pitchers and held the lamps in their left hands and the trumpets in their right hands to blow withal. And they cried, the sword of the Lord and of Gideon. Verse 21, and they, and they stood every man in his place round about the camp and all the hosts ran and cried and fled. In verse 22, we're going to stop there. And the 300 men blew the trumpets. And the Lord set, set every man's sword against his fellow, even throughout all the host. And the host fled to Bathsheba and Zerarath and to the border of Abel Mahola and unto Tabath. All right, so we have here uh, Joshua, after Joshua died. The children of Israel were led by the judges. They were supposed to be driving out the heathen nations. They were supposed to be driving out the Perizzites and the Amorites and the Hittites and the Midianites and all of these ites. And the children of Israel, instead of driving them out, they began to embrace them. They began to embrace their culture. They began to embrace their gods. God was not pleased with them, so he allowed the other nations to oppress them. Then the children of Israel will cry to God. God will send them a deliverer. And then they will win against the enemy. That leader would die. And the children of Israel will go back to worshiping and embracing the heathen gods all over again. 
So the book of Judges is full of this vicious cycle. So we see here in chapter 7, there is something going on. Okay? So in, in chapter 6, the children of Israel, they cried to God, and God said, all right, I'm going to send a deliverer. They cried by the, because of the hands of the Midianites were so great upon them, they were oppressed greatly. He said, I'm going to send you a deliverer. And this is where Gideon comes into play. From this text that we've read today, the subject will be a limited number, limited resources, limitless God. Okay. Limited number, limited resources, limitless God. Point number one, limited number. Gideon's army started out with 32,000 men. But God told Gideon that was too many men. God tell, told Gideon all the men that were scared, tell them to go on home. Well, 22,000 rolled out. It was like, thanks, peace, and I'm out. That left him with 10,000 men. God said, Gideon, that's still too many. Limited number. God said, those that don't, that, that lack word are like a dog. Those are the ones I want you to keep. That left Gideon with 300 men. That's less than 1% of what Gideon started out with. Limited number. 300 wouldn't be so bad if the enemy only had about three or 400. But the Midianites had 135,000 in their army. We're already starting out on a disadvantage with 32,000. But Lord, now you want to make it 300 versus 32,000. Excuse me, 300 versus, uh, versus 135,000. Limited number. Generally, when you go to war, they will recruit. They will draft if people don't sign up fast enough. The armed forces says, I don't care if you don't want to go, you're going. Come on, if you're of age and you have the right physique, the right stature, whatever, you're going. They're going to draft you. So who decides to make cuts preparing for war? God? No, that doesn't make sense. Hallelujah. But God is not a man. So it's not going to make sense to us. Now before the cut, it was 32,000 against 135,000. But after the cut, it was 300 versus 135,000. If you break down that ratio, for every one Israelite, there were 450 Midianites waiting to slice and dice. Limited number. That's a sick, crazy old ratio. One to 450. That ratio is ridiculous. It sounds crazy, yes. Because that's the way God likes it. He loves when it's ridiculous. When the odds are stacked against you ridiculously. God loves to move like that. Yes, he does. And you know how I know? As you are, look at verse number two. I love when God tells us why. God said, I need the number to be small. Because if it's not small, the children of Israel are going to vaunt themselves against God. They're going to say, look what we've done. Look what our hands have done. Look the glory that we've gotten ourselves. So God, if he thinks you're not going to give him the glory, he don't have any problems giving you a cut list. Because he wants the glory and he wants the honor. Then he said, y'all not going to boast in y'all. Y'all going to know it was me. All right, all right. Mm -hmm. He knows if we had the majority of people backing us, he would never get the glory. It's like when you're watching the television show and a good movie and it's over and all the credits go on the screen and they go through, you know, the main actors and actresses. It would be just like that. Then they go through design and they go to sound and they go to, uh, you wouldn't, God would be at the bottom. Come on. He said, you. oh, I finally see my, my name. But God wants us to know he doesn't, he doesn't want us to give the credit to anybody. Right. Limited number. He will limit our number just so yeah. he can get the glory. Just so we can say he is our savior. Yeah. Yeah. Isaiah 43 and 11. It says, I, even I am the Lord. And beside me, 
there is no savior. Beside the Lord, there is no savior. Psalms 18, 46. The Lord liveth and blessed be my rock and let the God of my salvation be exalted. Exalt God, exalt him greater than anybody else. Isaiah 42 and eight. I am the Lord, that is my name, and my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. God wants the glory to himself, and he will not share it. He refuses to share his glory. Limited number. So he will limit your number just so he can get the glory. God could be downsizing things in your life right now so that when he brings you out, you will declare <laughs> that he is the Savior. You won't have a problem. You won't have a problem saying it was God that did it. He will downsize your friends. He will downsize your inner circle. He will downsize whatever he needs to downsize in your life. But it's a setup for the victory of all victories. Uh-huh, uh-huh, limited number. God told Gideon the ones that are scared, let them stay behind. <laughs> what good is it to have 22,000 soldiers with you, and when the Midianites say boo, they go duck and dodge and dip it and hide. What good is it to have that many people behind you if they're scared? It makes no sense at all. God is doing us favor. Yes, it's painful. Yes, it's hurtful when God begins to let certain ones walk out of your life. When God tells you, I don't want you with certain ones. Yes, it hurts, but God is doing you a favor. I liken it something like this. I haven't dated a lot of people. I, I did meet my husband at 16, but we got married at 20, 20, 20 23. Uh-huh. So I dated a couple people. One of the young people at my church, she said, Pastor you ain't did that many people. If you got married at 23, you met your husband at 16. I said, true that. But I did date a few people. And you have a date somebody and don't work out and you be all sad. Yeah, it's just a women's conference. I know we got some in the room. You be all sad. It didn't work out. And you be all like, oh Lord, why? I thought he was the one. And then you see that joke of five or ten years later, you say, God, you was doing me a favor. Hey, yes, God. Hallelujah. They felt just like that. God was doing getting in a favor just like that. Hallelujah. And he's doing you a favor too, just like that. It just don't feel that good right now in the process. You just gonna cry a few tears. You just gonna whine a little bit. You just gonna be like, but God, I thought. You a favor, daughter. Woo! I thank him. I think about it sometimes. I say, God, I thank you. But there could have been another way. God is doing you a favor. You have all these people say, I'm with you. I'm with you. I'm with you. Then when trouble come, they not with you physically or spiritually. They went somewhere and hid under rock and in a cave. When he limits your number, it just doesn't always feel good. But he's doing it for your good. Yes, yes. Then God told Gideon to cut the ones that don't lack water like a dog. Mm -hmm. Some people are not willing to go into the trenches and get down and dirty for the cause, for the kingdom. Mm-hmm. We don't need, you know, real prissy ones, amen. When it comes down to kingdom work, you got to get dirty sometime. Ah, uh, yes you do. We have a food pantry, amen, and I got an incredible team of people that work. And sometimes people that come, you know, for the food pantry, some don't look like what they've been through and some do. And some smell like what they've been through and some, you know, coming a little high, a little drunk, a little something. That is not the time for you, if you're on that ministry team, that's not the time for you to run to the bathroom and leave the table. That is not the time. You know, oh, I just, that smell, I just, that's ministry. That's ministry. Hallelujah. So God begins to cut people out of your life that's not really, you know, with you. You know, we 
when you really need them. Everybody's with you when things are great. But God said, I'm going to help you out. I'm going to help you out, daughter. I'm going to help you out, sister. I'm going to help you out, brother. And I'm going to make this cut list. Sometimes things God allows things to happen we don't understand. But over a course of time, if you stay the course, if you stay in the race, God will allow you to see, wow, this is why you did this. Everyone is not for every season. Everyone is not meant for every assignment. The soldiers that went back home, most of them was on free will. They said, yes, I'm scared, and thank you. They took that out, and they rolled out with it. They said, yes, God, I got it out. Mm -hmm. Now, the other ones, they were still willing, but it wasn't their time. God said, I don't need the 9,700. Y'all can go back. All right. Uh-huh, because everyone is in for every assignment. You have to be sensitive to the voice of God. And guess what? Those that made the cut list, they were still soldiers. They just weren't meant for that battle at that moment. They were still soldiers. Uh-huh. We have to be careful because when God cuts people out of our lives, sometimes we think, oh, they're not a child of God no more. Now they're not saved. They're not with us no more. No, yes, they can still be saved. And yes, they can still be loved by God. They're just not meant for you in that moment, in that season, in that assignment, in that time. And when God begins to cut down your list, be careful of recruiting people back. Be careful of recruiting people back. Because God did you a favor, and then you're going to say, God, I don't like the way you move, so I'm going to bring them back. Then you're going to be crying out to God when it turns into a hot mess. Limited number. Be sensitive to the voice of God. God told Gideon to go to the enemy's camp to hear a dream if he was still fearful. And definitely Gideon was still, you know, pondering if God was really going to use him. The enemy dreamed the dream and that Gideon would defeat them. God let the enemy tell the dream and interpret the dream and let Gideon overhear the interpretation of it. We put too much time into our enemies. We put too much attention into our haters. It's wasted time. Hallelujah. This is, yes, this is the women's conference. Yes, I'm going to speak to the women right now. Everybody's not jealous of you. Everybody don't want what you got. Everybody don't want to look like what you look like. Everybody's not a hater. Some of us are pushing each other. Go ahead, my sister. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go forth in the Lord. You don't have to be jealous of anybody because we are all fearfully and wonderfully made. God made me the way I look. He decided, sister, I want you to be a darker hue than some. Glory to God! I'm not going to hate on you because you're not like me and you better not hate on me because I'm not like you! Don't give that much time to your head. mind that's a trick of the enemy for us to think oh she don't like me because I know she don't the way I walk the way I talk the way I look the way half of that is a lie that's the trick of the enemy to keep us divided when the women went forth with the fire I said yes God they, they could just go on and preach Powerful woman of God. This is a trick of the enemy to let us think, oh, this one don't like me. Watch, watch, watch. Don't watch. This. No. All right. Half of that is in your mind because of insecurities. But we are all fearfully and wonderfully made in the image of God. Everybody not going to look like, you know, whoever is super fly right now. Everybody not going to look like that person. I don't know, I don't want to date myself. I guess Beyonce is still hot. But everybody's not going to look like her. Everybody's not going to be her. And you got to be fine with that. We're the, the daughters, of the, the, the ones that got their stars today and all of that, the, the daughters of the commandments and that. I just got to get the right term, terminology. I want to encourage you. Be comfortable in the skin that you are in. You are made fearfully and wonderfully. It don't matter how short, how soft one. It don't matter how dark, how light. Your mind because you don't look like somebody else. 
limited number. And for the other half, because I said half of it is in your mind, and for the other half, that is true. We got the word for that, Psalm 16 and 7. Psalm 16 and 7. When a man's ways please the Lord, he maketh his enemies to be at peace with him. Are you pleasing the Lord? And then your enemies will be at peace. That's for the other half, praise Jesus. So you may, thank you. So you may have a limited number. Because God is setting you up for a victory. So that he will get the glory. Point number two, limited resources. I'm going to take this. What if you don't mind? in order to function effectively. Resources. And in my little layman's terms, things we need to get the job done. That's right. Money, materials, stuff. Resources. God did not provide Gideon and the 300 with swords, shields, chariots, and heavy armor. God provided them with the weapon, their weapons of mass destruction were trumpets, pitchers, lamps, and noise. They went to war with limited resources. God says your resources will be trumpets, pitchers, lamps, and noise. If you look at verse number 16, now 135,000 Midianites are coming with swords and shields. But 300 Israelites are coming with trumpets, pictures, and torches, and noise. Limited resources. You'll be like, God, you set me up with less than 1% of what I started out with. And then you're going to let my weapons of mass destruction be trumpets, pictures, lamps, and noise. Surely, God, this is not what you let me roll in the war with. God said, yes, it is, because I want the glory. The war consisted of great noise. Every man had to blow their trumpet. They lighted their torches. They hid their lighted torches in their pitcher, and every man had to shout the sword of the Lord and Gideon. This encourages us that it doesn't matter what the resources are or the lack thereof. If God wants us to be victorious, then guess what? We're victorious! Their weapons of mass destruction could have been stilettos, pearls, and a handbag. But if God calls it, that was going to be some dangerous stilettos. Oh, sure, for sure. 
But that's how Gideon felt. And I guarantee you, though, if God called you to do something, you have what you need to get it done. You already have it. I'm going to show you in a minute. Gideon may have never, and he didn't, ever take a course in basic training. Mm -hmm. Come on. Talking about these limited resources. He never took a course in battle winning either. And he didn't need to because God qualified him. He was qualified by God. He was sent by God. He was chosen by God. So he may have been the least in his father's house, but God said, Gideon, you are a man of valor, a mighty man of valor. So when God calls you mighty, you best believe God can back it up. <laughs> you best believe God can back it up. Because we see in Judges 6.34, it says, the spirit of the Lord came upon Gideon. <laughs> Whether you have limited resources or not, you need the spirit so the spirit can lead you and guide you on which way to go. At times we feel like we have limited qualifications. But God, I would do it if I had this. But God, I would do it if I had that. But God, I would do I would surely get it done if I had five thousand. If I had five hundred thousand. If I, if you got fifty and you won't do what you can do with the fifty. Oh, we're looking for God to bless us for 50,000. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Yes, God, yes, God. You have everything you already need. Mm -hmm. Some of us are waiting to be qualified by paper, and I want for education. I stopped at a bachelor's, praise the Lord. My husband has a master's, so I don't want you to take this like I don't like education, I do. But some of us are waiting for education. We think if we get a BS or a BA, an MSW, an MBA, an LPN, a CRPN, an MD, a PhD, then I'll do God's work. I said, no, do it now. You don't need all those letters behind your name. It's nice, but you don't need it. All you really need is the spirit of God. He'll provide the way for you to get the letters. We put the letters before God. the letters. If God called you, you can get the job done, even with limited resources. Bless our God. We say, God, we waiting for you to make a way. Lord, I'm just going to wait for you to make a way out of no way. He does. Well, guess what? He is the way, the truth, and the life. You want to know, oh Lord, I need a way, I need a way. Seek the way for the way. Seek the way for the way. Limited resources. We got everything we need in the spirit. Gideon had to make noise. They had to shout. They needed a lamp. Okay, so I'm going to do some of that right now. It's going to look a little crazy. But in order, in order to fight the enemy, they needed a great noise. They had to make a joyful noise unto the Lord. And they began to shout unto God with the voice of triumph. And then they began to know that the word of the Lord of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our pathway. Hallelujah. Then they just began to make a noise and said, the sword of the Lord is a sword of Gideon. Sometimes you just got to go in the pray. I got the victory. Hallelujah. God, I praise you. God, I praise you. God, I lift you. God, I adore you. God, I... Yes. 
That's right. That's why we love God. Yes, yes. God will set you up real good. Yes. They didn't have to do a sneak attack. They didn't have to hide and throw grenades. All they had to do was shout the Lord and Gideon and hit and make some noise. That's all they had to do. And they rolled up into that victory. Mm -hmm. You already need have everything that you need. You're looking for the Lord to give you other resources. But God said, I already gave you the resources you need. Catch this. Prayer, fasting, and the word of God. Don't that sound familiar? <laughs> Prayer, fasting, and the word of God. I don't have a new hyperlink for you. There's no WW new way to get salvation. There's no new way to get them God to move. There's no way to get tricks and stuff from God. It's prayer, fasting, and the word of God. That are the most underutilized resources we have. resources we have. We need to tap into what God has given us. Prayer, fasting, and the word of God. I know we in 2020 and I know everybody got tricks and all this kind of stuff. Prayer, fasting, and the word of God. You have those resources at your fingertips. 24-7. You have those resources at your disposal as much as you like. You have those resources overflowing. Yes, yes. Man should always pray. I, I, overflowing. You can read the word of God. Hallelujah. As much as we scroll on all this other stuff, we can scroll with the word of God. I got the victory. Hallelujah. It's still the truth. And I know we want to change the formula because I wanted to change it too. And when I took over the church, my husband said, there's only one way out of this. <laughs> and I was like, honey, I don't need that right now. Right now I need like, I need like, I need stuff. And I need this to be right and I need that to be right. He said, hun, you gotta seek the face of God. Come on. I totally didn't want to hear that. I just wanted to tell my mother to shut up. I didn't want to hear it. <laughs> but nothing else was working. I was like, man, he's right. I'm going to seek the Lord <laughs> like never before. Listen, when your parents are alive, I don't know about you. I can only speak about me. I, I didn't have to seek them like, seek them, seek them like that. <laughs> I knew my dad had me anymore. I was good. You let them, you let them die. That's you gonna learn to seek them, seek them for real. Yes, yes. And then they leave you to church. You gonna learn to seek them, seek them for real. Oh, yes. Prayer, fasting, and the word of God. The most underutilized resources, they're free. They cost you nothing. It costs you nothing to fast. It costs you nothing to pray. It costs you nothing to get into the face of God. That's right. But we want to do it our way. Yes. Limited resources. God has given you all the right resources. You don't believe it? Listen to this. Moses led a mega church in the wilderness with a staff. A little ruddy shepherd boy named David killed a giant with a slingshot and a stone. Jael helped Deborah get the victory and killed Caesarea with a nail. Limited resources. Joshua won the battle of Jericho with a shout. Uh -huh. Limited resources. Jehoshaphat won the battle against the Moabites and the Ammonites with a praise. Limited resources. We got all of that before us in the word of God and we worry about a resource. We worry about a number of resources. God has given us everything we need to win the battle. It's already won. But we got to get into the spirit. All the other stuff will come. Yes, I want money. Yes, I want houses. Yes, I want cars. All of that will come once we seek God first. Limited resources. Yes. Hallelujah. We flowing in a point number three. We serve a limitless God. 
He has no boundaries. He has no limits. He's the beginning and the end. He's the first and the last. He's the Alpha and the Omega, the Lion of the tribe of Judah, and he's the Lamb of God. He is the perfect dichotomy. Yes, he is. <laughs> he is the Son of God. He is the Word of God, and he is God. He is the Father. He is the Son. He is the Holy Spirit. Limitless God, and all three are one. Limitless God. What are you worried about? You got the limitless God within you. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! 
church, people of God. Yes, your number might got small. Yes, your inner circle is a half circle at this point. But it's for a purpose. And yes, your resources might be a little tight. Hallelujah. If I get another opportunity, maybe one time I'll tell you about tight resources. I'm not going to tell you right now. Hallelujah. Oh, but God has taken me through some things. Hallelujah. But I've learned through it all. God has all power. Hallelujah. He is the limitless God. We ask everybody to stand. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Jesus. I want you to be encouraged today. Hallelujah. You're looking at someone that I enjoy being in the background. And this is totally not my element. But I said a yes to God. And I meant the yes. And then I was like, Lord, did I get yes? He said yes. So I want you to be encouraged. If you're somebody that don't even like to, to do nothing, like with a mic or not, is that right? Because the limitless God lives within you. And he will give you the strength to do what he told you to do. Hallelujah. We're going to have a corporate altar prayer at this time because we all need prayer. Hallelujah. We all need prayer. Hallelujah. We all need prayer. Hallelujah. Father God, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for the word today. We thank you, God, for the encouragement today. Lord God, encourage your people today. God, some are dealing, God, with some family situation. Some are dealing with some friend situation. Some are dealing, God, where you've allowed close ones to be removed out of their circle. Lord, touch and heal your people right now. Oh, God, some, God, you are allowing to have limited resources, limited numbers in the bank, God. Limited staff, limited resources, but God, we know we can go to you and you will lead us and guide us on how to get what we need to get. Lord God, we thank you today for the word. Encourage these your people and forgive us, God. Some have complained during our season of limited. Some have complained, God, but forgive us for complaining. God, now we understand your will a little bit better. In Jesus' name and for his sake, we thank you and we say amen. Come on and begin to just magnify God. Come on and just begin to praise God. Come on and give him a confusing enemy praise. Hallelujah.
travel is not cheap. Amen. Airline tickets are not cheap. They're very expensive. Uh, driving your automobile is expensive. Staying in hotels and motels is expensive. So we thank you for the sacrifice that you've made to support this conference. And I pray that God will bless each one of you for doing so. All of our pastors that are here, uh, close down the, the doors to your congregations that are here today. God bless each of you for your sacrifice uh, in, in attending this conference. We just love you, saints. This has been a beautiful conference. I had an opportunity uh, to share with the men a little bit today across the, the vestibule on the local side. Had just a rich time over there with the men today. Those opportunities that we have to come together and to commune with each other and celebrate and study God's word and interact and be strengthened by each other becomes very, very important. So thank all of you uh, for loving this church. Thank you for the efforts that have been made. I'm, I'm excited. I, I would love to have a report. We're, we're not going to be able to do that before we leave here today. I'm not a good person to filibuster, that, so, but um, I don't know whether we're going to have it. Will we have it or we will not have it or somebody give me a nod. Is it no? They're saying no. That's a definitive no. An absolute no. Just check it. All right, I sure would like to know what those numbers are. Those of you that gave uh, additional 